this vast right-wing conspiracy that has been conspiring against my husband since the day he announced for president. That was Hillary Clinton's response when her husband was accused of having sex with a 21-year-old. Her husband was even more evasive when government lawyers tried to determine if he'd lied under oath. They asked whether his lawyer knew what he was doing with Monica Lewinsky. His answer is a classic. It depends upon what the meaning of the word is. Yes. Lawyers get good at using words to deceive. The blue dress may deceive harder to pull off, but that's another story. What I'm leading up to is that few politicians are better at saying things that help them weasel out of scandals than Bill and Hillary. Kim Strassel suggests that the Clintons have, within easy reach, a Clinton scandal manual with a standard operating procedure never changes. Forty years ago, the wife of a man running for Arkansas governor turned out to be, amazingly, a brilliant commodities investor because in less than three weeks, she doubled her money. No, she actually tripled, no, quadrupled her money. No, even more. Hillary Rodham Clinton made almost $100,000 in the cattle futures market in the late 70s. Many wondered whether that was a sweetheart deal arranged for the governor's wife. Mrs. Clinton initially invested $1,000 in cash, and 19 days later turned that into $16,427. I don't understand how that could have possibly occurred. How could that possibly have occurred in less than three weeks? I can't imagine. Not only that, she didn't even remember making all that money. The accountant and my husband and I missed the fact that we had actually made some money. You didn't remember the profit? No, I did not remember that profit. $100,000 here, $100,000 there. Double the money that her husband would make as governor. Who remembers things like that? And yet she was never punished for any of it. The White House said a Chicago commodities expert reviewed Mrs. Clinton's trading and found no violation of the rules. Around that time, there was also the Whitewater scandal when Clinton friends got sweetheart real estate deals and a bank failed. When prosecutors tried to figure out if the Clintons were behind it, the head of the real estate deal said the records were delivered to the governor's mansion. The Clintons, Bill was governor now, said the records, they're just, they've gone, they've disappeared. Seven people went to jail, but not Bill, not Hillary. Hillary came on my old TV program to talk about it. I like the way Hugh Downs introduced the segment. Tonight, Hillary Clinton under siege. An avalanche of serious charges and sharp criticism of the First Lady, who has been called a congenital liar. How did you get in this mess where your whole <laughs> credibility is being questioned? Oh, I ask myself that every day, Barbara, because it's very um, surprising and uh, confusing to me. Now, ha, ha, ha. Well, it's confusing to me, too. And when words are confusing, people forget. Today, people say, Whitewater? What, what's that? Though they do remember the next scandal. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Six months later. Indeed, I did have a relationship with Miss Lewinsky. The Lewinsky affair got lots of attention, but again, no lasting damage. Hey, it's just sex. But then there's also the cover-up and lying under oath. But, hey, people lie about sex. Wake me when Bill or Hillary lie about something really important, something that affects people's lives. U.S. officials are investigating whether or not the attack on the consulate in Libya was an organized terrorist attack. Did somebody get advance warning of this attack? Secretary of State Clinton first blamed the attack on a YouTube video, even though the State Department had information about it being terrorism. When confronted about that, she said, I take responsibility. People like it when politicians say that. Then comes the excuse. In the fog of war, there's always going to be confusion. Then deflect the question by saying, I don't really want to be partisan when we're talking about something important. And what I want to avoid is some kind of political gotcha or blame well, game going on, because that does a disservice to the thousands and thousands of Americans. And what does it matter, anyway? There's a difference between getting it wrong and committing wrong. Getting it wrong versus committing a wrong. You politicians taking notes at home? Though I don't know if you normal politicians could get away with breaking email rules the way Secretary of State Clinton did. 
It would have been better for me to use two separate phones and two email accounts. I thought using one device would be simpler. Except it turned out she used two devices. iPhone or Android? <laughs> iPhone. Okay, in full disclosure, Blackberry. And a Blackberry. She just lied. And what was in those emails? I took the unprecedented step of asking that the State Department make all my work-related emails public for everyone to see. Except she probably didn't. She turned over only emails she said were relevant. The rest she wiped clean from her home server, a private server government officials aren't supposed to use. Then she refused to give her server to a third party for an independent review. Consequences? Punishment? Nothing so far. But at least after Benghazi and the email scandal, her fellow Democrats finally turned against her. Nope. The witch hunt continues. Witch hunt became the word of the day. Republicans are latching on to this witch hunt. Republican witch hunt. It's all about a witch hunt. After all that you just mentioned, Bill Clinton left with a 65% approval rating. Hillary Clinton today is the most popular politician in the country. And you're discussing a non-scandal, nothing illegal, full access, and it's all politics. Nothing to see here. Breaking the State Department rules, erasing the server, two financial scandals, records disappearing, taking advantage of a 21-year-old girl, then lying about it. That's just politics. Finally, though with the Clintons, I shouldn't say finally, the, the latest scandal is revealed in the new book, Clinton Cash. After the State Department helped get President Putin a big uranium deal he wanted, a flow of cash made its way to the Clinton Foundation. Four donations totaling more than two million dollars, not publicly disclosed by the Clintons. What did the Clintons do about that? Well, let's pull out the scandal manual. It must say something about that in here. And, oh yeah, it calls for the aw shucks response. I asked Hillary about this and she said, you know, no one's ever tried to influence me by helping you. Say what? No one ever tried to influence them? People gave billions to the Clinton Foundation, including some who want special treatment from our government. But there's no problem? No, says Hillary, it's just money for charity. I am very proud of the work the foundation does. But what work? Their foundation hasn't given much to charity. That's repulsive. But apparently, the Clintons are Teflon. Brian Williams misremembers hostile fire. He loses his job. Hillary says, I remember landing under sniper fire. We just ran with our heads down to get into our vehicles. That was supposedly in Bosnia. When she was caught in the lie, Hillary just said, oh, I misspoke. But she didn't misspeak. It was total fabrication. The Clintons lie, take money from foreigners, break government rules. There must be magic in this manual because the odds on Betfair say in the upcoming presidential election, the overwhelming favorite is still Hillary. Maybe you can explain this to me. Coming up, stupid things politicians say. Unchain 